Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here. I, I'm on Iberia today, and I, I, bet, I, I bet if you're in Portugal, yeah, you hate getting lumped in with Spain all the time, but uh, I suppose it's like if pe people have a wine section that says North America, in the way that Canadians and uh, people from the USA are identical, aren't they? In the way that Chileans and Argentinians are, are identical, if they're all lumped as South America. Anyway, enough waffle. I will start with a Portuguese one. Duas Quintas, um, two estates. Adriano Ramos Pinto, 2007 Douro Red. Um, these guys, Ramos Pinto, they were probably one of the first um, of the modern era of Douro table wines. There's uh, table wines always been made in the Douro, but it's the port that has been uh, coming out for years and years. Only really in the last 20 years has, um, has table wine really developed and these guys were one of the first to to get properly on the on the act they've got two estates one called Quinta de Evermora where they also make some uh, uh, port and Quinta de Bons Ares which uh, I think was one of the first vineyards planted specifically with table wine in mind I might be wrong hey who cares well I stick my nose in and it smells like it's going to be bright um, like like blackcurrant jam, uh, not uh, over the top sweet jammy, but because uh, blackcurrant, I was very specific, blackcurrant rather than blackberry. Blackberry jam can be just like a bit too insipid and sweet, but blackcurrant jam has got this bit of bite to it, and it feels like there's um, that edge of bite here. Nice bit of spice, yeah, that blackcurrant, bit of cherry, juicy, earthy. Um, quite firm, I and mean, the finish I'm left with is uh, there's quite a bit of tannin still there. But that's that juiciness of the fruit uh, makes me think I want to have that when that fruit's uh, as it is now. I don't want to, it to mellow so much. So certainly a wine to have with some food, but have that with a, a nice steak or something, and uh, those tannins will just dissolve all those um, all those bits of protein or whatever food and wine happens. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> Good to see that um, I, I thought they'd had a bit of a dip in form a few years ago, but it's, uh, that one seems to be back on uh, back on form now. Okay, next one here. Uh, we are in Mallorca, so we're on the four Spaniards now, and uh, Masia Batley, uh, twelve twenty-five a bottle uh, from the denomination of Binisalem, made from those well-known grape varieties Manto Negro, Calet, e Cabernet Sauvignon. So you know the Cabernet Sauvignon, but. Um, yeah, Mallorcan wine, not much of it around. These are probably one of the uh, uh, bodegas that you'll see more than any other. And there's a wildness, there's a wild, warm meatiness about this. It reminds me of um, things like Bondol. It's got that um, sweet, figgy edge. It smells good. Yeah, if that's, uh, if that's steak wine, this is stew wine. It's funny, I prefer the smell to the, the, the taste. The smell's got this nice wildness to it. The palate... Maybe just a bit angular, um, and a, an edge of what I, what uh, the Australians call dead fruit. It feels like some of the grapes have just gone that little bit too ripe, and then they've they've had they've been, have been allowed to macerate just that bit too much, and you're getting that ever so slight raisiny character coming through. Yes, mm. not so sure there. I I like bits of it, a bit of a curate's egg of a wine. Let's move on to Rioja and see whether we get better there. Um, 2005, well, I'll give my glass a quick rinse. I should probably have done the Riocas um, before something of such size, but I thought I'd just do it in vintage order. So I'm on 2005, Vigna Pomal Centenario Reserva 2005. And this feels much lighter, but more fragrant as well with it. Um, it's got what I call that strained acidity. And, you know, I don't know if you have terms that you use, um, whatever your field of work is. You know what they mean, no one else does. I suppose what I mean by that is it feels that there is a freshness there and it feels like all the way through the wine there's this there's this edge of something that's holding it all together so whereas the fruit has got this nice raspberry uh, strawberry bit of orange peel there's this acidity going through to sort of just like as a uh, keep the tension throughout the wine it smells nice bit of vanilla very respectable wine that yes it's this nice edge a uh, nice mixture of um, freshness with flavour. Um, it's not too tart, um, uh, but it, it still has got a quite a bit of tannin. Um, and again, definitely food wine. You need something um, meaty to go with that, or 
something full flavoured. Uh, imagine if you have those uh, big portobello mushrooms and uh, uh, and grill those and uh, with with a nice. I uh, don't know what you, what you put on as a topping. I'm I'm not a veggie, so uh, I'll, uh, sorry veggies if I'm waffling too much. You you sort something out. You know, sort out sort your mushrooms out yourself. But yeah, but full flavoured medium bodied which I think is the best thing for wine a lot of wines do it the other way around full bodied medium flavoured but there's quite a lot going on in in that wine this one here Vigna Mara 2004 Reserva so uh, a year older than the one before and uh, I think this is the one that Tes Tesco's own labelled um, I should have had one from a n other supermarket to compare with this but the T H E other supermarket uh, didn't come up with the goods not mentioning any name, but it rhymes with Hainsbury's, just let's put it that way. Okay, um, and here I'm getting more maturity. Um, it feels like it's it's going to be more on the age side. It's, uh, yes, okay, it's a year older, but I think both of these years were pretty good vintages for, for Rioja. This feels like it's got uh, more of a, a, I don't know whether it's had longer in barrel or whether this was uh, has more concentrated fruit, but I notice here more of the vanilla, more of that slightly cedary edge of oak. Still smells nice. Yeah, that's um, gentler, juicier, not quite as fruity as the, as the pomal. The pomal's just got a bit more vibrancy to it. But I know that if I put that on a table, there'd be half the people would prefer the one that's got the, like, that bit more acidity and that bit more freshness. And uh, um, the other half would like this one for its extra mellowness. It's not Grand Reserva mellowness, but um, uh, yeah, it's not quite as fruity, but uh, it's got this gentleness. It's got this warmth and generosity to it. I um, can't remember the price of here, but I don't think again. I don't think it's a, it's a it's a silly price and uh, pretty good wine. Growing on me that one actually. And I, I'll go back and try these two afterwards, and uh, maybe I'll end up preferring that one. Who can tell? Last one, a Reserva, but not from Rioja. This is one's from Navarra, uh, and it's a Civite Gran Fudo, um, two thousand and four Tempranillo Cabernet Merlot. Give it a whirl. And there's a sweet, slightly sweaty, feral meatiness here. There's, um, uh, I, 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 it doesn't feel quite as confident. Uh, they, these, these two felt really gentle, confident wine. This one feels like oh, almost as someone has felt, oh, what can we do now? What can we put in here? And I do get an edge of Britannomyces as well. There's some of that slightly horsey edge. Mm, not so sure there. But the weird thing I find about wines with Brett, if you don't know what Brett is, have a, uh, I, I might put a little bit of waffle on below uh, on the website uh, about what I think about Brett. Um, what I find about Brett is if you have a wine with Brett in, there's almost, it almost like the level stays the same. Sometimes the wine then comes out and if you hit it when the, um, the, the, the Brett's here and the, 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 the main flavours in the wine are down here, the Brett's all you notice suddenly the flavours rise in concentration. You get to here and you think, actually the Brett's almost quite nice having it there. It adds a bit of complexity. But um, it's one of those things, I, I think about it as like a wine wart. Uh, one wart on someone's face you can cope with. Two, three warts, yes. If someone's sort of like, it's, well, braille face, um, you don't really want to go there. This isn't quite braille face wine, but um, I'll be interested to see how that develops. So I will report back. Well, it's a couple of days since I opened the uh, the Civite wine, and I just want to see what's happened to that uh, Bretti edge, whether it's still dominating the wine. And what's happened is there's a bit more fruit come out. Yeah, it smells sweeter, lusher, but still there's that dry, slightly horsey edge in the background. It's okay. Um, the Riocas, I've actually preferred those. Went back and tried both of them again. I found myself preferring the Mara the more and more I tasted it, but there's... Yeah, I still get that, to, it's the dry finish that I'm not so keen on. That's one of the effects of bread. Anyway, give it a go. See you soon.